Welcome to a new video. As I promised to you, I have now four smartphones here with a very large sensor and we want to take a look at their raw performance. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we have the photos in DNG RAW. All of those here are in DNG RAW and you can see on the side here, let me make this a little bit smaller, the data. So this is the Xperia Pro i, this is the Xiaomi 12s Ultra, this is the Magic 4 Ultimate and this is the Mate 40 Pro. This will be a little bit of a longer video and I did of course a comparison of multiple images but I will only show you two images otherwise this video will be too long. So these, uh, these are the DNG RAW images that I took and when we take a look at the data like the aperture f2 and the shutter speed 250, 1 over 250, 1 over 243 shutter speed f9, uh, 1.6 aperture and 1 over 20, uh, 1 over 221 and then f9 and 1 over 262 so almost all the same as you can see here and these are the different results what we can clearly see is that the Sony sensors on the Xperia Pro i and the IMX 989 on the Xiaomi 12s Ultra look almost identical. There's a little bit of better HDR handling here in the sky as you can see here was a bit overblown on the Xperia and very similar also to the Magic 4 Ultimate which also I think has a Sony sensor here, I'm not sure, maybe it has a Samsung sensor, but it's also very similar to the Sony one as you can see here, very very close together, a little bit better HDR handling here eventually. And then a completely different color on the Mate 40 Pro from Huawei, as you can see a lot more bluish kind of color, I think in terms of HDR almost as good as the um, Magic uh, for Ultimate and the Xiaomi 12s Ultra, but the color is a bit different. What I want to show you right now is when I go in one of those, let's go to the Xiaomi 12s Ultra, I show you how and what you can do when you want to edit it. And I'm not showing this with the sliders here, just show you the before and then after. This is what you can recover in terms of shadows and details, which is very, very interesting. Let's go to this picture and let's take a look at the this is after, this is before. So a lot darker, a lot less details, a lot more details, a lot more color information that you can restore here on this device with raw images. This is one of the major advantages of taking raw images. The same goes for the Sony. If I go in here, this is the before and this is the after. You can see how much I can recover in terms of details. It looks a little bit artificial already, so maybe I overdid it a little bit with the editing. But let's take a look at the photo itself. Let's take a look at the details. Let's go maybe here. This is the after, this is the before. You can argue eventually that there's a little bit sharper, because we have noise reduction going on here, definitely that is uh, smoothing things out a little bit. So this all depends on what you want to do and what you want to achieve. RAW is really a magic kind of tool if you want to do a lot of editing and change your picture dramatically with the best picture quality possible. So let's take a look at the edited versions to check how good I am at editing and what you can really achieve if you want to edit those photos. So these are the edited versions. What we can see here clearly, the brightest photo is definitely the Sony here, but it's also the more artificial and some kind of blooming going on because the noise reduction, I had to pump it up. All the other ones I did not have to do so much to, uh, to do in terms of noise reduction. There's a bit of noise and you can change it. But on the Sony it was the hardest to figure it out. But you can also see that we have a bit of kind of warm and yellowish kind of color that we don't have so much on the Xiaomi 12s Ultra. And we have a bit of more greenish and cooler kind of color on the Magic 4 Ultimate. And the brightest in terms of sky and still exposing here, but 
yeah, also the probably most natural kind of color we have on the Mate 40 Pro for some reason, because yeah, this is white. It's not as green as here, this white, not as yellowish as this one. It's very close to the um, Xiaomi 12 as Ultra in this regards, but a bit brighter, which is very interesting here. And we could go into detail levels here. Yeah, I will only do it once because it's hard for the Mate 40 Pro because it has 50 megapixel raw file instead of uh, 12 megapixels that the others all agree to use here. And we can see the 12 megapixels roughly the same. We have most of the noise on the Sony, definitely. Then I would say the next one would be the Xiaomi 12s Ultra with um, good quality and then the Magic 4 Ultimate that looks, uh, would be the, the, the best in this case. So this looks the worst actually, this is the second worst and this is the best looking, the Magic 4 Ultimate in this case, for, for this kind of picture. With the Mate 40 Pro I have to go in like this and you now see, yes the Mate, 50 Pro ha Mate 40 Pro has this highest resolution but the quality is not as good as the other ones. So this would be actually the worst, the Mate 40 Pro, even though it has the highest resolution. It doesn't do pixel binning, which is one of the issues that might occur. Otherwise, when we check out the flower here, what we can clearly see is the Magic 4 Ultimate is the worst in this case, because it's overblown here, and the separation between background and foreground is not there. And the Sony is doing the best here, uh, closely followed up by the Xiaomi 12s Ultra. When we take a look at the um, Mate 40 Pro, it's doing a little bit better, I would say, than the Magic 4 Ultimate, but it's still not the best. And uh, yeah, this is a big issue that we have on those. So here you can see all those pictures. The Sony looks like the artificials, most artificial one, and I think the, the race is between the uh, 12S Ultra and the Magic 4 Ultimate, where I don't like the Mate 40 Pro for some reason. Even though the colors look a bit more accurate, it's too cooled down maybe. Maybe I can slide it up with the warmer slider and make it a little bit warmer. So let's do it quickly. So what I could go in here and I can change the colors a little bit and change also the, the numbers here a little bit and uh, could make it a little bit warmer if I want to. So I have like the f uh, color balance here where I can change the color to a little bit of a warmer tone if I want to. Uh, this is a bit too green. Let's go here to the warmer kind of colors. Yeah, this is make it a slightly tad war uh, warmer, a bit more in this yellowish kind of. And yeah, so this looks then should look a little bit warmer than uh, it looked before, but still a bit cool uh, down as you can see here. But these, these are the edits that you can usually do with the RAW files. These are not the most spe spectacular edits, but yeah, these are edits that I did. Now let's take a look at an outdoor picture where we don't have this big contrast difference, because this is one thing that you can do, recover shadows and maintaining highlights. And here we have now Let's do this here. Here we have, sorry, uh, here we have now the raw files of those. Here we have the Xperia Pro I. Here we have the Xiaomi 12s Ultra. Here we have the Magic 4 Ultimate and the Mate 40 Pro. And you can see a dramatic difference, even though almost all have the same settings. So here we have the ISO 100, here we have ISO 50 but almost the same kind of setting. So all of them are getting to the lowest ISO that they have, but almost the same setting and various different, very different output and result. The darkest is the Mate 40 Pro, followed by the Xiaomi 12s Ultra, then the Magic 4 Ultimate, and the brightest here, the Xperia Pro i. What we can clearly see is also a difference in terms of HDR, and color reproduction. I would say the Xperia Pro I can use as it is already in this Pro mode, in this RAW mode. I don't have to edit anything, which is pretty cool. Maybe a little bit getting the clouds a little bit down. This would be everything that I need to do. And 
yeah the edits that I did then of those pictures are looking the following uh, let's do this so these are the edits what I did on the Xperia because it was almost as good as adding a bit more punch to the Xperia so if I want the Xperia not to look so natural but a little bit more punchy just like all the other ones you can see that the Xperia looks a hell close to the Magic 4 Ultimate now where I boost up the brightness a bit more on the Xiaomi 12s Ultra to show you how much I can recover in terms of shadows which is pretty pretty cool so if I go in here and I can zoom in you can clearly see it's noisy as hell because I recovered so much shadows so if I go and say okay I want less shadows be re being recovered this looks a bit more natural not so much noisy and when we then go back here you can clearly see it is not as bright as it was before looks more close to the Xperia as ever the Xperia has a bit more contrast in the sky a bit more punch still but I can edit this out I could make it look like the uh, Xiaomi 12 s Ultra and this is something very very interesting those two here I think Sony sensors both they are very very close in terms of sensors not only in size but also in how they work so you can make look the Xiaomi 12 s Ultra photo with DNG RAW the same as Xperia Pro i or vice versa and to some extent also though it has a different sensor in this case the Magic 4 Ultimate which looks very very close to the Xperia though it has a bit of better HDR especially in the cloud on the top left just look at this and also I think here by default the Xiaomi Traverse Ultra has a bit of HD better HDR here of course I could go into the Xperia and try to pull the lights down a little bit to get a little bit better lights but you can see it look looking too artificial here already so I have to play around with some other settings here all the information information is just not there to be recovered in the cloud which is something that I also encountered on the Sony which doesn't have the best HDR for sure and then I think the uh, Mate 40 Pro the oldest here is doing still a splendid job but we still have this kind of all of them are warm tones as you can see and this is cold tone for some reason and yeah I don't like it it needs to be warmer this is very interesting a stark contrast to what the Mate 40 Pro is outputting as a JPEG because the JPEG is much much warmer so here I would have play have to play around again with getting it a bit warmer but when you take a look at the colors and the noise you can see it's very close to this is now 50 megapixels uh, keep this in mind and this is what it looked before so very very dark and this is what it recovered so also very good HDR here could go down a little bit with the lights again to make it a little bit better here uh, going a bit down there but what it's missing is a little bit of punch so what it's missing is a bit of uh, vibrance so let's add a little bit of vibrance towards it and is it doing something I think it's doing something better to make the photo a bit better 100% like vibrance okay uh, so what they ha have here is like a little bit lack of, of those warmer kind of color tones that is an issue with the um, with the made 40 pro that i found out but you can see this little edits what they can do it looks now like more hdr better cloud exposure here and more details in the clouds than before the only thing i had to edit is like make it a bit warmer and then it would look almost the same as those here and one would be one of the best even though not in details because yeah it's not doing pixel binning it's having the 50 megapixel photos here so what is my conclusion after all of this and after taking lots and lots of other shots is like I said Xiaomi 12 s Ultra and Xperia Pro i very very close in terms of um, things that you can edit the HDR is a tad better on the Xiaomi 12 s Ultra then the next one would be the race between the Mate 40 Pro and the Magic 4 Ultimate the Mate 40 Pro needs the most editing because of this coolest kind of colors that, that, that it has a different color array that just needs a bit more of editing and adapting for it to be looking good 
It has the most of information with the 50 megapixel, but it's also the hardest to edit because it is 50 megapixels and it's the hardest load, uh, the largest file, file, and it takes a lot longer than all the other ones here. It has one of the best HDRs, even a tad better than the Xiaomi 12s Ultra, I would say. So recovering from shadows is a bit of a problem here, where the 12s Ultra and the Xperia Pro I. Uh, would be almost on the same level in theory. The 12S Ultra is the clear winner here because I get, especially in very low situations, low light situations on the Xperia Pro I, just too much noise that I cannot really edit it out. And on the 12S Ultra, I don't have this much noise. In terms of noise level, otherwise, the Magic 4 Ultimate is a bit better than the Mate 40 Pro. And it is I think almost on par with the Xperia Pro I. The Xperia Pro I may be a slightly a tad uh, worse in terms of noise reduction and noise uh, floor uh, in comparison to the Magic 4 Ultimate. So these are my findings when comparing all the RAW files. I know it is a very hard topic to present four different phones in RAW and I took a very very long video here. I'm not sure that everyone is like happy with my findings. I will put those RAW files that I showed you here um, onto a web server so you can download and play around with those RAW files yourself, the unedited versions, uh, to see if you can do better, if you have more experience with editing with RAW files or a better RAW editor. I'm using Darktable here in this case. Uh, then uh, just uh, take a look at it and in general, yes, raw files are pretty good. You can recover a lot of stuff that you did as a mistake eventually when taking the shot. But most of the time, I would still say, and this goes also for photography nowadays, um, I'm not so fond of taking raw files. It's a good thing if you really are a photographer, if you really have time to edit your photos. But if you don't have the time to edit your photos, just try to take the best shot directly at the spot where you are and uh, then if you need to do fine little adjustments only not like big adjustments like i want to recover the overexposure or the underexposure that is completely not visible then um, you could like fine details you could also do with the jpeg files you don't need the raw files for this and you can do it even on the phone where here uh, with the DG files, I would recommend to do it on a PC because you have the bigger screen usually where you can zoom in and check this out or attach your smartphone to the PC, uh, to a uh, moni larger monitor to take a look at uh, the photos there and uh, to adapt them there. In general, yeah, these are my findings. What do you think? What are your experiences? What is your experience with DNG RAW, with RAW files from the various different cameras? Which one do you think? is the clear winner in this comparison here. Which one did you like better? Write it down in the comment section. That's everything for this longer little video. Uh, until the next time, bye.